Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Griffin and I'm a filmmaker based out of Orange County, California. And today I'm here with my friend Armando and we're gonna be comparing the Canon C70 versus Armando's FX3. All right, let's get into it. So jumping right into it for image quality, that's really one of the most important things that you wanna look at when you're looking at cinema cameras. And I'll put out a quick disclaimer. I think almost all the cinema cameras you can get now are actually really good and probably totally fine in terms of image quality. Whether you're shooting on a Blackmagic camera, Sony, Panasonic, Canon, whatever, they're all probably good enough for professional work. Any of the cameras that are shooting 10-bit 422 are gonna hold up really well for color grading, they're gonna have pretty good dynamic range, and they're gonna get you through most professional situations. Now, that said, we all like looking at the details, so let's get into it. So in this first scene, this is the C70. This is testing the camera in kind of a high dynamic range situation. Now, what I wanted to do was expose for the subject inside and notice that back wall. And now here's the FX3. Now what I'm noticing here is it does seem like the FX3 is holding the highlight detail just a little bit better. You can notice the contrast between the brightest part of that wall in the back and then the basically second brightest part of the wall there. It looks like there's a little more detail held there. And now here on the C70, you can notice that it does look like it's holding a little bit less of that detail. So my first thought was, okay, so it seems like the FX3 has probably got a little more dynamic range. But one of the things I've learned from shooting with the C70 extensively is that it holds all the detail really well in the shadows. So in a different scene, here's PJ, and he's super underexposed in the shot. I think it was probably about four stops underexposed. Now you can see when we pull back all that detail, the C70 actually looks pretty solid here. You know, I mean, I would never expose this way in a real life situation, but you can dig really deep into the shadows. And now with the FX3 here, when I pull back the exposure the same amount, it does look like it's got more noise to me, and to me it wouldn't be a usable shot. So I think one big takeaway I had is with the C70, you really wanna protect your highlights, and you wanna make sure that if anything, you can slightly underexpose and still pull the image back, which is atypical of most cinema cameras. With the FX3, on the other hand, it exposes more like a typical cinema camera where you wanna make sure that you don't underexpose, otherwise you might find noise in your image. One other thing I noticed on that scene with Jake there is it does seem like the transition from mid-tones to shadows on the C70 is a little bit smoother, whereas on the FX3, it's a little bit more contrasty. Now, both of these are using the factory supplied LUTs. So this is the Canon, LUT for C-Log2, and this is the Sony LUT for S-Log3. Now, the curve on the C70 kind of reminds me a little bit more of area cameras. It's a little bit smoother, I would say, whereas the S-Log3 with the Sony supplied LUT reminds me a little bit more of my experience with shooting with RED cameras, where it's a little bit more of a contrast image. Now, that said, there's great LUTs out there that can affect the image in a lot of different ways, so I wouldn't really take this point with too much contention. So even with those findings, I do want to bring home the point that both of these cameras are really strong in terms of image quality. You know, here's a different scene of PJ, and this scene's massively overexposed on purpose. We match both cameras, same setting, same lens, same tripod, same everything. And you can see, here's the C70, massively overexposed, and then just with a couple clicks in Premiere and the basic tabs, boom, you can pull it down, and it's looking totally fine. It looks perfect. It looks like you didn't overexpose at all. Now with the FX3, it's really the same story. You know, you can really pull it back. The image does look a little bit different in terms of color, but I would say that it's equally as good. Both cameras do really well in terms of holding overexposure, and both are actually really good for underexposure as well. So one of the cool things with the FX3 that a lot of people were really stoked about was the fact that it has s -Cine tone built in, which is actually a really great looking picture profile if you want something just ready to ship right from the get-go. Now, one of the cool things with the C70 that I actually like personally is the fact that you can load in custom user LUTs. So what I'm gonna do right now, I've got my screen recording up here. So what you can actually do is go into your custom picture profile menu. Right now I'm on log two. What I'm gonna do right now is go down to one of my custom LUTs. Uh, they're one of the GC LUTs. They're made specifically for cameras like the C70. So this is the midnight LUT. I actually really like the way this looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and select midnight. Now you'll notice it has a lot cooler, bluer tone to it. Now, for me, the type of boxing that I film most of the time is actually a look that I, I like. This is a graded look that I like. So most of the time I'm filming a C-Log 2, but if you did need to ship something and you wanted a real sort of cinematic look to it, you can really dial it in. Or alternatively, if you wanted a different look, maybe this isn't the one for you, that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut. 
and I'm gonna swap over to a different look that I made. So you can go something like Pacific. This is another one of my LUTs. This one's a little warmer. We'll roll up on that. This is the Pacific LUT. And you can see you've got a different, this is a warmer, a little bit browner and greener tone to it. So it's kind of nice. It gives you more options instead of just the one S Cine tone, which is a really solid look. But for me, I, I sort of like having all the different options that you can have by loading in your custom LUTs that are made just for the C70. By the way, I will link those down below if you're interested. So right now we're dialing the cameras in for 60 frames per second. One of the cool things about the C70 is it has what's called a shutter angle. So you just kind of set your shutter to 180 degrees for most things and you would just leave it there forever. And if you go to 60 frames, it'll adjust your shutter to 120. If you go to back to 24, it'll adjust it back to 50. So that's kind of one of the nice things you don't have to remember. One of the things with the FX3 that I'm just realizing is uh, just kind of like with the, like a mirrorless camera, you sort of dial in the shutter manually. So it's not the end of the world at all, but it's just something to note about the cameras. One thing that's really important for me, being that I shoot a lot of sports and action, especially boxing, is slow motion. So I did want to test out the 4K60 on both these cameras because that's the codec that I use the most. Um, both have 120 as well in 4K, and it's good on both cameras. But what we're focusing on for this test is 4K60. So here's the C70. And here's the FX3. Now, I don't think there's like a really big point to take home here other than they both look great, and I don't have a real strong preference for either one. So I'd say it's pretty much equal in terms of slow motion. So right now we're, we're in the middle of doing our autofocus tests, and I'm gonna be honest, the Sony cameras have always really tempted me for a long time, uh, especially the cameras like the FX3, the price points they come out, the features they come with. One of my only hesitations has been the fact that I own myself like 14 Canon lenses, and the company I work with owns a whole bunch more. So it'd be really tough to switch to Sony uh, and have to sell the lenses. Now, some people will say, you know, hey, you can just adapt the Canon lenses onto Sony bodies. And that's actually the exact thing that we're doing for the test. But one of the issues we're running into is a compat compatibility issue where some of the Canon lenses that we're trying to use, some of the, the normal ones, like the 24 to 70, are actually not compatible with this adapter. So for me, personally, it's not to say that they won't work at all or something like that, but for me and the way that I like to work, that's something that I wouldn't really like to have in my typical production workflow. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I usually stay with Canon. So I think really for me, the biggest difference between these two cameras comes down to the features and kind of who they're designed for. It's not like one is good, one is bad, one's worth it, one's not. Uh, it's not exactly black and white like that, in my opinion. Now, there's a price difference, so that definitely matters. C70 is more expensive, FX3 is a little more uh, affordable for some. But the thing I would say is the C70 for me really fits into a professional workflow. So the sets that I work on, we're constantly using things like ND filters. We're constantly using things like shutter angle. We're constantly using exposure tools like the waveform, like false color, like zebras. Those are all things that are built into the C70. And basically all those things, uh, with the exception of zebras, are not in the FX3. The biggest one for me is not having ND filters. The type of work that I do, it, oftentimes it's fast paced and oftentimes it's on bigger sets. So it can really be in both those circumstances. And the C70 for me is a great performer in all those circumstances. I never have to worry about, did I forget my ND filters? I never have to worry about if we're doing a multi-camera shoot, can we run time code? I never have to worry about things like exposure and I don't have to expose off the back of the camera. I get exposed using professional tools like waveform and false color. So for me and all those reasons, I really like using the C70. Now, I do love the FX3. Honestly, I wish Canon made a camera that was like an FX3 that could take EF lenses natively because if they did, I would already have it. I think it's an awesome camera for vlogging, social media use, uh, quick turnaround stuff, jobs where you need to take photos in addition to video. I mean, that's a huge feature. If you're ever shooting content and you have a client that's like, hey, can you snap a few photos of me? And I'm holding the C70, it's like, well, hang on, let me go get a different camera. You know, it's kind of like, it would be nice, or a thumbnail for YouTube. It would be nice if it could take pictures, for sure. Uh, so, you know, I really hope that Canon makes a camera that's a true hybrid uh, mirrorless type camera, like I think the FX3 is. So anyways, guys, hopefully you got something out of this comparison. It was a really fun time, and I'm really thankful for Armando for coming out and doing this comparison with me. Make sure you go check out his video. He really goes over a lot of things that I didn't get the chance to cover. 
uh, one of the things that I thought was super interesting was the Catalyst Browse Stabilization Software. So he does a really cool example in his video, as well as a lot of other cool things that I didn't have the time to talk about in this video. So if you like this kind of content, consider hitting that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.